stock induction systems for a small block Ford. Now, the simple, effective combination, the one that I recommend 95% of the time, single four barrel, dual plane intake. That's my go-to piece. You put it on there, it works, it drives around, it makes good power, it does everything it's supposed to. If you have a little more power, a little wilder combination, maybe a single plane. You lose a little power down low, but you make it up at the top. Both of these combinations work, and they work well. But what about the more exotic combinations? The one where you lift the hood and everybody goes, dang, Gina, that looks good. You know what I'm talking about, like a dual quad. Sure, it might not make as much power as a single four barrel, but it looks good. Same thing with a cross boss, awesome piece. Or how about stack injection? Now you're talking. In this video, we're gonna compare stack injection from Speedmaster to simple carburation on two different combinations. One is the short deck 302 base motor, and the other is the taller deck 351 base motor. In truth, our 302 base motor is actually 363 inches, and we'll go over the description of the motor and all that stuff when we get to the dyno results. And on the 351 base motor, it's actually a 408 stroker. So both of these combinations had enough motor to take advantage of what these stack injections actually had to offer. So we'll get over all that in the dyno results, but I want to cover something else before we even go there. There are some considerations when thinking about this type of manifold. Now, most guys will buy this stack injection simply because it looks awesome. And let's face it, it really does. It's polished, it's got radius air horns, it's got all the things that it needs to really look cool. But here's some other considerations before you buy a manifold like this, really from anybody, and before you look at the dyno results, which are also very promising. Here are some, some things to think about. First thing, you know, air cleaners. Now, if you're going to drive this stack injection around as a daily driver, you certainly have to think about air cleaners. If this is a motor that you're going to run around 100 miles a year and drive to cars and coffee and show off and it looks awesome, you really don't have to worry about it. But if you're actually driving it around, you don't really want to drive around a stack injection with open, <laughs> without an air cleaner, basically with open air horns, because a bunch of dirt gets in there, it will eventually ruin the motor. So you have to think about air cleaners. And the problem with air cleaners for these stack injections is I've never seen any that work really well that don't hurt power, whether it's the screen or the individual filters. The only one I've seen that works really well, and you guys can let me know in the comments if you guys have ever seen cool combinations for the stack injection, but the thing that I like that works really well is the system that guys use on trophy trucks. Now, they, they'll run a stack injection, but they enclose it in a common box, which really becomes a resonating volume and it stops being an IR manifold, but that's a whole other discussion for another time. So you have to think about air cleaners. The next thing is, Think about performance, and this goes back to testing that I did long ago, and this applies really more to the 302 base version than it does to the 351. On the 302 intake manifold, the, the round opening going to the, the square head port, the transition and the turn and all that, there's some room for improvement. I mean, this design was done long time ago. Shelby was running this thing back in the 60s with downdraft Webers on it, and they worked really well. But this system needs a little bit of help, and I'll give you an idea. Back in the day, my buddy Tom, who used to work at West Tech, did some porting on one of these manifolds, and we did a back-to-back -back test on one of these stack injections on a healthy 302 base motor. It was actually a 347. But just from porting the lower manifold on that 302 base, we were able to pick up like 30 or 35 horsepower on a solid combination. So it's definitely worth looking at. It's something you might want to do before you put this combination together and actually put it on your vehicle if it's just for looks and just for show, don't even worry about. On the 351, that's not really a problem. The final thing to consider is drivability. Now, when we run it on the dyno, we go to wide open throttle, it's easy to get all the blades synced. There's enough airflow, they make a ton of power. That's never the problem. The problem is at the other end of the spectrum. The problem is at idle. And it's usually not a tune problem, we'll get into that in just a little bit. It's actually a mechanical problem. You have to get all the blades synced up, and it's hard enough with two, but when you gotta do it with eight, it becomes more and more problematic. You have to get them to open all at exactly the same time. If they don't, you, actually, you obviously have different vacuum levels in the different ports that are, they're gonna require different fueling, it's gonna backfire, all sorts of things are gonna happen. You're gonna have basically drivability issues, because if they start off at the same, if they don't start off at the same spot, they're gonna go all the way through the sweep at a different spot. You know, one's gonna be making more power, one's gonna be at a different angle than the other. So it becomes problematic. So 
figure on spending some time, who's ever doing the installation, it's gonna take some time to get all of these work things working just right. And then on the electronic side, on the tuning side, the nice thing is these new manifolds join all the runners together so you have a common signal for the map sensor, which is great. And if you're not a tuner, talk to your tuner about that. He's gonna love that. Getting a signal from just one port and hoping that it's the same as all the others, kind of a problem. So those are the things to think about. Now let's get to our testing. Our first test motor was the short deck or 302 8.2 deck combination, but this thing did not displace 302 inches. It actually displays 363 inches. It was a Dart SHP short block, so they assembled everything basically. It had their block 4125 bore and a 3.4 inch stroke, the one that we normally combine with a standard block to make like a 347. But since this had a 4125 bore, uh, we had more displacement. It was a good combination. We equipped this thing with a healthy cam from the guys at Cam Research Corps. It had a 737-725 lift split, 254, 252 degree duration split, and 112 degree lobe separation angle. And the, the reason it had that camshaft in it, because we were actually prepping this thing to run with a turbo, which it did later on and made over a thousand horsepower. So we had that camshaft in it. We also topped it with a good set of heads. Airflow Research 225 heads, which are good size heads for a motor for a combination like this. But we chose something that had 72 cc chambers, again, because we were prepping it for use with the single big turbo, and we wanted to actually lower the compression of this flat top combination. So to get things started, we ran this thing with an Edelbrock RPM air gap intake manifold and a 950 HP carburetor, set of inch and three quarter headers, and so equipped our 363 produced 480 horsepower and 441 foot pounds of torque. That's what and we ran it obviously with an MSD distributor, played the timing, the jetting just to get everything right. Then we installed the stack injection from ProComp Speedmaster. Obviously, we had to run that fuel injected. So we dialed that thing in, and with the stack injection, it made 509 horsepower, although it looks like if we would have kept revving this thing, that it would have continued to make more power. And this is kind of like your typical single-plane, dual-plane curve that we normally associate with that kind of change, because the stack injection did make more power at the top from, you know, 48 or 4,900 RPM on out, but below that, the dual plane, which tends to shine in this area anyways, below that, even down to 3,000 RPM, the dual plane made a little more power. So you have some considerations here. One is that there's a trade-off in power. So where do you want your power compared to the dual plane, which is nice for driving around? Uh, where do you want your power? And also, um, there are some other things associated with the stack injection. First of all, it's fuel injection versus carbureted. So you're going to have some expenses there. Uh, it looks really cool, which is why most people buy it. But it also can be problematic for drivability and stuff. And we'll go into that more on the next combination when we run it on a 408 stroker. But it did pick up power. It looks cool. But make sure that you know that going in, there are some, you know, teething issues and problems associated with this. Let's get to our next combination. After running the test on the smaller 302 based combination, we stepped up to a 351 Windsor based combination, it, and this was a 408 stroker. So it had a 4 inch stri uh, stroke and a 4030 bore, creating our, four, our 408 using the 351 Windsor block. This was a 10 to 1 combination. We had a set of Brodex heads, and <laughs> Brodex has such long names, I wanted to make sure that I got it right. They are, they are 195 KC heads, and they, these were CNC ported. I know a lot of guys will be thinking, yeah, 195 head on a, on a uh, 408, that's too small. But these things flowed like near 300 CFM, so there's enough to support the kind of power level that we, we were at. We also had a pretty decent camshaft in it. Not big, but this was more kind of a street-oriented deal. It was one of the Comp XFI like stroker cam, so it was the 236. I'll go ahead and put the specs up here, but it was a 236, 248 degree durations split so it was kind of a healthy cam and to start off with our baseline we installed an Edelbrock RPM air gap intake kind of the quintessential go-to dual plane deal for street applications and in, honest, in all honesty it's probably a little undersized um, for a big inch 351 but that's our was our starting manifold and we also ran it with the Holly 950 Ultra XP carburetor inch and three quarter headers the MSD distributor um, it was a good stroker combination, 
and equipped as such, tuned, you know, we dialed in the timing and the air fuel, did a little jetting on it. It made 530 horsepower, 529.5, rounding up just a little bit, and 535 foot-pounds of torque. So the fact that it made a little more torque than horsepower tells you that's not a real uh, serious combination. Probably needs more camshaft. And hey, you know, bigger heads probably would help too. Some 210s or 225s on a 408 is not unusual. And I wouldn't hesitate for a second to put bigger heads on it. But the Brodex heads were what we had and what we had when we were testing. So that's what we decided to run this combination on. So here's what happened after we replaced the RPM air gap intake with the stack injection, the downdraft deal from the guys over at Speedmaster. So we got a big change in power from the stack injection. So not only does it look look like super cool, because I, I don't know about you guys, but I've always been a huge fan of like the stack injection all the way back at the Can-Am days. Not that I was watching the Can-Am racing when <laughs> when I was you know five or six or whatever, but um, I, they I just like the way that the individual stack stuff looks. The only thing is that as cool as it looks like to take your car down to Cars and Coffee or whatever, or even be racing around in it, sometimes the stack injection stuff is, is can be difficult. I mean, it's it's hard to find air cleaner stuff for it without hurting power. Um, you don't want to be driving around a whole bunch and just ingesting like nonstop dirt and debris because it makes the engine life go away and stuff. But there's no denying it, it does look awesome and. In this case, it also makes power. Our peak power was up to 571 horsepower, and peak torque was up at 556 foot-pounds of torque. So we were doing really well. It was a good combination. That's a healthy 408, and it would be really fun to drive around. If you had this thing in a Fox Mustang or like a Kit Cobra, this thing would be awesome. So it just goes to show you, not only do these stack injections look good, they make a lot of power, but please note that um, there are some things that are that go along with this. Low speed drivability and tuning can be problematic unless you have a really sharp guy and unless you really take the time to make sure that all of these things, that the linkage is all synced, that everything is opening at exactly the, right, at the, exactly the same time. Now, wide open throttle, it's less of a problem. Um, it, it, it creates almost no problem at all because it's easy to get them all lined up and, and that wide open throttle. It's when you make really, really small throttle changes, getting them exactly synced to all make the same throttle change, that becomes the issue. And then obviously tuning, something you'll have to deal with with a stack injection. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay, guys, what did you think about our test on the stack injection on our 363 and on the 408? Let's see. It looks cool. It makes good power. And we went over the considerations. Let me know what you guys think. Would you put one on? I'm Richard Holder, guys. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. More testing coming up.